The RCR is introducing new clinical radiology and interventional radiology curricula that are designed to be up-to-date, relevant and user-friendly. The curricula can be downloaded as PDFs from the RCR website. Well, the background to writing a new curriculum is that the GMC uh, published new guidelines, standards for curricula called Excellence by Design. And uh, these guidelines required us to change our curriculum and change the approach to one of high level outcomes, also known as entrustable professional activities or capabilities in practice, and to base our curriculum on their GPCs, the generic professional capabilities, and also the Shape of Training Review Group report. In summary, here are the key changes of the new curricula. They are concise, 12 outcomes for clinical radiology, plus an additional two for interventional radiology. They provide clear expectations of progress. Progression grids show expected progress for each stage of training. They are outcomes-based. Capabilities in practice or SIPs describe what trainees should be able to do. They are intuitive. Assessment is based on entrustment scales to support professional judgment. And finally, they are future-proof, designed to prepare trainees to work within a changing service and with emerging techniques and technology. The Clinical Radiology Curriculum has 12 SIPs, which describe what a trainee should be able to do by the time they become a consultant. The first six are generic and reflect capabilities expected of all doctors, such as communication and teaching skills. The remaining six are specific to radiology. And there are an extra two SIPs that interventional radiology trainees will need to achieve in addition to those in the clinical radiology curriculum. Well, each SIP or capability in practice is stated along with a number of descriptors. Now, these are statements which are illustrations of the sorts of knowledge behaviours which might demonstrate competency in that SIP. In addition, there's a, a link to the GPCs, the Generic Professional Competencies, but also a list of suggested evidence that a trainee can use to demonstrate competency in the SIP, such as relevant workplace-based assessments. Each SIP is also mapped to the domains of the GMC Generic Professional Capabilities. Concise tables of presentations and conditions replace the long tables of knowledge, skills and behaviour found in the 2016 curriculum. For each area, the tables list presentations for which trainees should be able to develop an imaging strategy, imaging features that trainees should be able to recognise and techniques that trainees should be able to demonstrate. Um, so the SIPs tables have, um, are supported by additional systems-based tables that um, have three columns in. Um, the first column is regarding presentations that a trainee would be expected to um, be able to present an imaging strategy for. Um, the second is about conditions which are common in that system and the trainee should be able to identify the imaging features of. And then the third and last column is regarding procedures and um, modalities that the trainee will either vary from having experience to specialist knowledge of. The imaging modalities and techniques described in these tables are divided into three groups. Modalities, labelled as proficient, are those in which trainees should be entrusted to act independently by CCT. Those labelled as experience are those where trainees should have knowledge of the role, indication, contraindications and limitations of that modality. And procedures labelled as specialist are those that only trainees completing special interest training would be expected to develop skills in. The curricula also aim to prepare trainees for future developments in radiology with sections on emerging technology and techniques. The new curricula will be implemented by August 2020. All trainees, except those due to achieve their CCT before September 2021, must transfer to the new curricula.